In this episode, we conclude our baffling bagpipes Q&A session. Get ready to dive in. Glenn says, I've always suspected that my pipes are too difficult to play. Okay, just so you know, that should never, ever, 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 ever be the case. Okay, but uh, I'm, I'll uh, get into that in more detail in a second. But you can't put your finger on why that's the case. Years ago, my pipe major loaned me his pipes for a gig, and they were incredibly easy to play compared to yours. Yes. That's probably how bagpipes should feel. All right. Um, many times you seem to be fighting with your pipes and cannot concentrate on good playing as a result. So, Glenn, just to reiterate, that should never, ever, 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 ever be the case. So, and let me explain. So there's a process to, to achieving a great bagpipe sound. The very, very first and foremost thing that we need to do it, uh, before we do anything else is to double and triple and quadruple check that our bagpipes are 110% efficient. And what efficiency means is that no air anywhere, so not a single molecule of air, is escaping our instrument unnecessarily. Not one single molecule is my objective, right? Um, and there's a process for doing that, and it's a four-question process that we use. Okay, and I literally, to this very day, despite the fact that I'm an expert, okay, I literally ask myself these four questions every time I get my pipes out of the case. Question number one, is my pipe bag airtight? Okay, and <clears throat> if I'm not sure, I cork up the instrument, uh, other than the blow stick, blow in, make sure that bag is 110% as airtight as possible. Right, meaning that if I blow it up as hard as I possibly can, and I leave it for 30 seconds, when I come back and try to blow more air in, I literally can't do it. That means my bag is airtight. So that's question one. Question two is, are my joints airtight? I'll just grab my instrument real quick. So are the joints of the instrument airtight here on my instrument? What that means is, as I lift my bagpipes out of the case, I do a check here on all of my joints. You can see like it actually takes a little bit of force in order to get these guys out because if that's not the case that means there's air leaking through and I do that with all of my different joints that's question two are my joints airtight question three are the reed seats airtight so when I take my drone out of the reed seat here right is the reed seat airtight and if I actually take this out just for now I'll show you just how sure I am that the reed seats airtight is that I can do this with my drone read, I can literally shake the drone up and down, and that read will not come out there. Okay, whoops, put that in backwards. That's question number three Are the reed seats airtight? The final question that I ask is Are my drone reads properly calibrated? So, um, calibration means just like I was saying earlier, I forget who it was to, I was saying it to Jonathan earlier. I use that test. So if I overblow, I need to make sure all my drone reads shut off at the exact same pressure, and that guarantees that things are going to be um, as efficient as possible with the drone reads. And those are the four questions. If all four of those questions are true, my bagpipes will, by definition, be comfortable to play. Next up, so, but Glenn, that's a great question, and I hope that my answer has helped you because that is the uh, name of the game there. Stanley says, I think the most baffling thing for me when piping is when I have to change channel reads. I'm very picky about my tuning, and it often takes me two or three days before I'm happy with the way a new read sounds on my setup. It's completely baffling to me when I see a pipe major or a professional piper just drop a new, in, new read in, play for a couple minutes, and he's ready to go. How do they do that? Okay, uh, a couple of thoughts here. Number one is, um, if, if I'm going to be playing serious solo events, uh, which I'm not in serious solo mode right now, but when I am, I have two or three reads in a sort of rotation so that um, I actually know that reads are well-established 
and I can use them in a pinch if I need to. So I have backup reads in place. So part of what you're witnessing might be that someone has a backup read ready to go. It's already been broken in, already goes well in that chanter. And then that's sort of what you're looking at. And then meanwhile, it's just experience. So the more times that you change reads and you put reads in and out, the better that you get at it. I've literally, uh, I've literally set up probably 10,000 reads or more in my days. Um, now for me, that's a disproportionately high number. And it's because, um, you know, for many years I was a pipe major of a band. So for at least 10 years I was pipe major of a band. So I was picking reads and setting them up for people. And I do that over and over and over again, right? I also have a bagpipe shop where, you know, I would set up chanter reads and stuff in customers chanter. So I've done that many, many times. And you just get good at it, especially once you understand the principles involved. Um, which I was fortunate enough to learn when I played with the SFU pipe band, a lot of, you know, the really, really um, correct, let's call them, principles of setting up chanters and chanter reads. So Stanley, that's a great question. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight. And if you're very picky about tuning, you know, that's okay. But you have to sort of teach yourself not to be too picky at first, to, to get the basics set up. And then we sort of fine tune over a you know, reasonable period of time. We can fine tune those notes. Just remembering that it takes time for reads to break in. Okay, I think this is the last one. Last but not least, Mary says, what confuses me is how to correctly tape the chanter holes to tune the notes, especially on the upper hand. <coughs> also, how to correctly use a tuner for tuning the drones. Okay, that's the two-part question. Let's go with part one. Uh, correctly taping the chanter holes to tune the notes. So, first of all, remember that tape is a fine tuning tool. So we want to use as little tape as possible. Although I'm not anti-tape, there's a difference. There are some pipers out there who mistakenly believe that tape is some sort of thing that we should be ashamed of and that we shouldn't use. I actually have tape, and I'll grab my chanter here. I actually have tape on every single hole of my chanter, okay? Um, which you can see, I'm gonna show it to both cameras here, which you can kind of see. But I'm, I actually try to use the minimal amount of tape. You'll notice nothing here is drastically covered in tape. The only possible exception is the B, which I mentioned on a previous show. In this particular chanter, I drilled out quite a bit. But, um, you know, we want to use tape as minimally as possible because the more tape that goes on a note, the less uh, we'll be able to come through that hole, right? And then, so the overall tonal quality of that hole will be diminished. You know, it's a big, that's a big thing, especially in higher level bands. When bands have too much tape on the holes, uh, they experience a decreased level of uh, tonal quality as a result. So, uh, and then the next thing, as far as correctly taping. Now, if you're talking about just logistically, you can see what we need to do here if you look closely. So the tape goes on the top of the hole, okay, because what the tape does, logistically, scientifically speaking, is it's lengthening the distance between the hole itself and the source of the vibration. So when we add tape, it lowers the note. The distance between source and note is longer, thereby flattening the note. So if a note is sharp, you want to put tape on the hole, and if the note is flat, you'd like to take tape off the hole. But remember, there are other uh, extremely important tuning techniques that we need to use, the most important of which is the position of the reed seat, uh, the position of the reed in the reed seat. Okay, raising and lifting the reed, trying to achieve that perfect position in the reed seat for the reed. And from there, just as we were mentioning early with, earlier with Stanley, I think it was, we are, um, you know, using tape to fine tune only once we've balanced things out. Okay, and that requires a little bit of patience. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll I'll just point out here that some of the comments that Mary received, you know, are not are not entirely endorsed by me. So, some some people saying it's best to have a second person there to adjust the tape for you. Not true. Okay, uh, you can and should and need to learn how to adjust the tape on your own. Um, 
handy device called the Piper's Second Hand. Yeah, so, uh, you know, all of that stuff, I don't really recommend it. What I recommend is uh, testing, okay, testing for the tuning of the note and then making changes based on those tests. And we use a test called the blow trick primarily. Yes, Mary, uh, uh, that's a great epiphany you just had there. So she just commented in saying, yes, she adjusted her read in the read seat and it affected your upper hand, so you needed to move the tape. That is correct. Hopefully you adjusted the read such that you could take tape off the top hand because the more tape that goes on the top, the less volume and brightness and richness we're going to have. Okay, so that's good. Next question, how to correctly use a tuner for tuning the drones? There is, this is a strong opinion of mine, which is that um, a tuner should never be used to tune your bagpipes in any way, okay, period, unless you're tuning the drones in the band scenario. So if you're referring to the band scenario here, Mary, um, the way to correctly use a tuner for tuning the group's drones is to find the master, I call it the master pitch of the band by, okay, good, glad to hear it, Mary. So uh, what you want to do is find the master pitch of the band, and usually that's done by listening to the pipe major's pipes, or whoever has the strongest bagpipe in the band. Uh, in high level bands, you often want to do this by committee, uh, which means that um, you want to actually survey a couple of different instruments to make sure that the correct master pitch has been chosen. Uh, and then, once you have that master pitch, it gets programmed into the tuner. It's usually a number, like 481, right? Uh, and then you pick that number, and then you go set everyone's drones to that number just by holding the uh, tuner up to the drone and getting that drone in tune, okay? Just remember that there's a lot to that. The person who you're tuning has to be blowing steadily, okay? That's a big thing. Um, you know, you have to, you know, you have to do that once the pipes are warmed up, and you have to sort of continuously do that. You can't expect to just tune them once and have everything stay stable forever because, and the, the big reason the tuner is necessary at all is because the bagpipes are always changing over time due to the changing environment in the outside world and the changing environment inside of the bag. So just remember the tuner is not a, this is why I don't encourage tuners at all for pipers is that the tuner is not some sort of magic wand that makes it so we don't have to listen to what we're doing and make choices based on what we're actually hearing. Okay, We still have to develop a good ear, we still have to develop good solid logic about what's you know required to set up your bagpipe properly, just don't lose track of that. So you know, if you do use a tuner, it has to be strictly as a tool and not as a crutch that allows us some sort of excuse to not improve our tuning. So just keep that in mind. That's always my disclaimer with tuners. Um, and, uh, you know, that's the bottom line. And I think that's our last question for today. So I'll hang around and wait for about 30 more seconds if there are any final questions in the Facebook chat. But other than that, I think our Baffling Bagpipe Monday is... Uh,